Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian from the Farnborough International Air Show outside London, and we have with us Jeff Babione, who is the Executive Vice President and General Manager of Lockheed Martin's F-35 program. Jeff. Congratulations. Thank you, Vargo. It's unbelievably exciting to be here. I mean, to bring the F-35 finally to the world stage. Two years ago, we're just not quite ready, but here, airplanes in a tremendous, just a much, much better place. It's unbelievable to see the support that we have. A great opportunity for the customer, the worldwide community, to see what the F-35 can do. Um, you uh, were the vice on the program. You've worked on it. It's obviously a low-stress environment that you're yeah. working on every day. But talk to us a little bit about what this means for uh, the folks who are working on the airplane. You know, a friend of mine was saying, like, wow, you know, it's 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 real and it's it's starting to get recognition. Obviously, that's what you get in an air show audience. How does it feel for all the the hundreds of thousands of folks who've been working on the program. You know, I know it's a great sense of pride to finally see the thing that they've been working on for so many years really, really thrill primarily the customer. You know, it's all about providing the product and service that our customer wants and seeing what the F-35 can do. We really have met that commitment. It's super exciting. What a great opportunity to showcase the F-35, and I know they're tremendously proud of what they've done. Um, cost reduction uh, is obviously a priority, both on the production of the airplane, but also on sustainment. Um, that's something that uh, the Defense Department customer, each of the national customers, the partner nations have been working on. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, while you guys are enjoying it and soaking it up, I know you guys are working on, obviously, the program, the development phase is ongoing in full stride and you're ramping production up. Walk us through some of the things that you guys at a Lockheed Martin level, as the head of the industrial team, are doing to cut the production costs of the airplane and also the sustainment costs. You know, reducing the price of the airplane is extremely important. We recognize that if we can do that, the customer will make it more affordable for them, and for the long run, it's a win-win. So the industry team, Lockheed Martin, BAE, and Northrop Grumman, have invested over $140 million to dramatically reduce the price of the airplane over the next three lots, and in fact, it'll take, uh, that benefit will uh, go throughout the rest of the program. Just in uh, these three lots, we're saving over $1.7 billion for the customer. And we're doing that by changing the way we build the airplane, sometimes changing the materials that we use to a less expensive material that has the same capability, or actually changing the way we build the airplane, automating some of the assemblies now that we do by hand. So it's a really exciting time. We recognize that not only is it important to reduce the price of the airplane, but the overall sustainment cost of the airplane. And so we'll be moving to do a similar kind of model with an industry investment uh, going against targeted improvements in the way we maintain the airplane, uh, the way we acquire spares and implement them. So we see a very good opportunity for industry to invest in the opportunity to reduce the price of the F-35, not only in production, but in statement, and ultimately increasing the performance of the weapon system. Um, the ALICE system, the Automated uh, Logistics Information System, obviously that, uh, the autonomic, excuse me, uh, uh, system that is the it's sort of the maintenance, right, the wholly integrated maintenance backbone of the, of, the, of the program has come under some criticism. It has interfered a little bit with development testing and as well as with, with training. Um, obviously, you guys are working on a fix on that. Talk to us a little bit about what you guys have done and at what point do you think that you can put a cherry on top of it and say that problem's done? Yeah, Alice continues to improve on a, on a regular, almost daily basis. Uh, we recently, last year, deployed the latest version of Alice, and the Marine Corps used that to go to 29 Palms, and the U.S. Air Force recently used it to go to Mountain Home, and they're very pleased with the performance. Uh, later on this fall, we'll come out with a, yet another update uh, that we think uh, will be extremely important to our overall customer base, but ultimately, there's one more version of Alice required to, to finish out the STD program, Alice 3.0, and that should finish out in late 2017. So so we're really seeing Alice mature, um, much like the overall weapon system, the mission system. It takes time, but we're doing what we need to do to do it right, because it's very important we get this right. As you mentioned, Alice is core at operating, launching, and recovering, and maintaining the airplane. We make sure we get it right for our customer. Do you, um, one of the thing, one of the initiatives to try to save money is obviously doing the block buy idea that surfaced about 18 months ago. Um, General Bogdan has, has discussed it. Frank Kendall has, uh, the undersecretary uh, for acquisition has, has discussed it. Talk to us a little bit from a corporate standpoint, from Lockheed Martin as the, as the industrial team leader. What are the benefits of it and how do you rank, you know, how do you do this? You know, what are the opportunities, but also what are the challenges that have to be overcome? Yeah, the opportunity to do a block buy is a huge, huge benefit for the customer. Uh, not only does it significantly reduce the price, but it enables us to stabilize the supply base. So we continue to work with the Joint Program Office to go through various 
permutations. Uh, we understand that perhaps the U.S. government would not join a block buy uh, until lot 13, that perhaps the partner countries would like to start in lot 12. And we should see some details of that later on this summer. It would be important that we see that probably uh, in the July, August time frame, because in order to make sure that we can aggregate the buy, that's where the real savings come from. We call it uh, economic order quantity. So we buy all the parts we need for 500 airplanes instead of just the parts for 100. The supply base can give us a better deal on that. So we're working with the JPO to find out exactly how we might be able to do that. Are there resources that industry can bring to bear that would help the U.S. government and the other partner nations get into the block buy? But those details have yet to be worked out. But we're encouraged. I'm convinced there'll be a block buy. Just exactly when it will start is the only thing that's ahead of us. Um, Canada obviously is a big question. Um, the Trudeau government, when it came in, said that um, they would, you know, open the comp open the program for competition. A couple of weeks ago, uh, it sounded like it was going to go to a sole source buy to the F-18. Uh, and Canadian officials, in their statements, have have sounded like they're hedging. Um, but you know, what's the status on that? Is there going to be a competition? And what's the case you guys are making to the Canadian government? Yeah, so Canada continues to be a valued partner in the program, and they will be until the JPO offers that they're not. But as from the very beginning, the industrial participation was always tied to how many airplanes you're going to buy. Uh, Canada has reaped the benefits. Many of their suppliers in that country do a significant amount of business on uh, virtually every F-35 that's produced. So it's important that we continue to work with the Canadian government to ensure that they go through and uh, purchase the F-35. The latest uh, contact with they've had with us is that they're going to provide industry, Lockheed Martin being one of those, um, a survey to answer various questions about the price of the airplane, the overall cost to sustain the airplane, and we'll uh, participate in that survey. Our overall objective though, Vago, is to make sure they understand the capability that the F-35 brings and why it's really a perfect match for the Canadian Air Force with its ability as a fifth generation fighter to fuse the information to, from a stealth standpoint to go places where we know the, the competition can't go and this ability to go long distances. Uh, we have a tremendous range on this airplane uh, even in its LO configuration and when you look at the capabilities of the F-35, it's really a perfect match uh, for the Canadian Air Force. In the event the Canadians do decide to drop out, um, does that actually add cost to the program as you have to type qualify new guys and certify certain parts and capability that they were bringing to the program? Certainly that potential exists. Uh, if for whatever reason we chose to move the work out of those Canadian industries, we'd have to go try to find, set up someone else to build those parts. And given that uh, those Canadian industries are already down their learning curve, uh, getting them cost competitive at a new location could be difficult. So I, I see that as a potential output. Um, you are also a senior executive with uh, Lockheed Martin, so you obviously have a profit and loss, uh, you know, books that you're managing, ex you know, aside from, you know, just delivering on the program. Wall Street has been a little bit concerned that with each one of these buys that the customer is very happy with. Some of the Wall Street guys are very concerned that you guys are trading off profit margin for that. Um, talk to us a little bit about how you guys are doing the balance um, on that to make sure that, you know, you're as profitable as you can be, but you have a customer on a very big program that's as happy as they can be. You know, it's always difficult uh, to ensure that you have a win-win. Uh, does the customer get the product and the service that they want at a price that they can afford? And can Lockheed Martin and its industry partners make a fair return on that investment? And I think we're getting uh, much closer to having that arrangement. This is this is a journey. Uh, we're going to finish up the SDD program here end of next year, and that's where we'll really have a, a firm configuration on the airplane. I think our customer will gain more confidence on the stability of the supply chain and our ability to produce the airplane and that will be able to, to strike a better balance between the price that we can offer the airplane at uh, and what our customer expects from that standpoint. As I mentioned from the uh, production initiatives, we're, we're dramatic, uh, dramatically reducing the price of the jet. The customer recognizes that and along with that should come an increase in profit. And that's really where we're trying to strike the balance with our customer. Jeff, thanks very much for joining us. Congratulations and best of luck on the program. Great, thank you. Appreciate it.